Good morning. I'm John Klassen, Director of Competition for Great Race, and we're, I'm going to do the first hour of rally school. We're about 10 minutes late, but if we run over by about 10 minutes, you'll still be able to all make the start. The official start time of today's run is 11.30. I'll go for about an hour. We'll take a 10 or 15 minute break. Bill Croker will do the second half of rally school. And when the first half is over, I have to get out of here really quick because we're going to, we have to go out and lead the route and get all the checkpoints set up and make sure the route hasn't flooded out. What's this deal all about? This is the great race, and this was alluded to by Jim Minello a little earlier, but what does that mean? Does that mean that the car that runs the fastest, the first car that gets to Springfield, Missouri tomorrow, the first car that gets to Santa Monica in a week will be the winner? And the answer to that is, of course, no, we can't do a fastest car wins type event on public roads. So the nature of the great race is a controlled speed endurance road rally. We give you, or will give you, or in the case of today's run, have given you precise driving instructions telling you what roads to take, what speeds to try to attain, when to leave various places, and if you do the competition as we describe, if you leave the point you're supposed to leave at exactly the right time, if you follow the route we give you, if you go exactly the speeds that we give you, you will have done the competition exactly correctly, you will win $50,000, and you'll get a trip to Japan. <laughs> How do we know whether or not you are doing the competition correctly? How do we know whether or not you are following the route we give you? How do we know whether or not you are atta attaining the speeds that we have assigned? The answer to that is that we will check on your progress several times each day, and the way we will do that is at various checkpoints. Now there are two types of checkpoints that you will encounter each day. The first one I'm going to talk about, this will almost certainly not be the first one you will encounter, but the first one I'm going to talk about is the observation checkpoint. The observation checkpoint is identified by a red sign. It says stop. Uh, first sign we're going to talk about is the red sign, the stop sign. It will not be at that altitude. It will be on the ground like this. <laughs> When you, see, there holding it. <laughs> when you see the red sign, you will um, do what it says. Red means stop. You need to stop and talk to the worker. There are several purposes for which we will have the red signs, one of which may be to have an inspection checkpoint, make sure you don't have any illegal equipment in the car. Second of which may be to collect time allowances. The third of which may be to, and will be, this is the most likely place you will get, you will encounter a red sign each day, is at the finish line each day. At the finish line each day, we will check you in. If all goes well, we may have your checkpoint times or your scores for the day. And we will um, mark your card, give you, uh, we'll endorse your course instructions to verify that you have been here. Red sign, red means stop, talk to the workers. They may also give you emergency instructions. If a road is flooded today, we will have to flag you down and uh, flag you down and give you emergency instructions. Red sign, red means stop. The more common sign you will encounter is the green sign. <coughs> green sign is a timing checkpoint. At a green sign, we will time you and we will give you a score. You won't know what it is. We will give you a score on the portion of the event that just ended. We're going to talk about some terminology now. The term stage refers to a day of competition. Today's stage is the trophy run. Tomorrow is stage one. The next day is stage two. Each day's instructions will say on the front cover, stage, stage number, stage number one, and the footer of each page will stay, say stage number. The term stage refers to the day of competition. The term leg is a portion of a day's competition, a portion of a stage that ends at a checkpoint. 
And the third term I'm going to talk about is checkpoint. Legs and checkpoints are sort of referred to interchangeably. They're not quite the same. A leg is a portion of the route that ends at a checkpoint. The checkpoint is where we time you at the end of a leg. When you start the run today, you will be on leg one. You will be on leg one from there until you get to the first green sign, checkpoint one. Immediately, you will begin leg two. You will be on leg two until you get to the second green sign, checkpoint two, and so on. At the red sign, I told you what you needed to do. Red means stop, stop, talk to the workers. Green sign, what do you do? You'll like this answer. The minimum that you need to do at a green sign, green means go, the minimum that you need to do is nothing. There are things I'd like you to do, but we will do all the work. We will, we will time you at the checkpoint. We will get a time based on that. We'll give you a score. We'll send that to Computer Central, Scoring Central, and do all the calculation. What would I like you to do at a checkpoint? What I would like you to do is write down where, perhaps right there in your course instructions, the instruction you're working on, write down that checkpoint one, first one you get to, and the time you arrive there, hours, minutes, and seconds. Nine o'clock, 22 minutes, 14 seconds. The reason that we'd like you to do this is that this will likely happen sometime in the next few days. Someone will come up to me and say, I think my score on checkpoint on leg one is wrong. And I will say, okay, we're gonna, we have ways to investigate that. We have that you got there at a certain time. What time do you think that you got there? If your answer is, I don't know, it will be more difficult for us to investigate your inquiry than if you say, well, you marked me at 9, nine o'clock and 12 minutes and 17 seconds, and I think I got there at 9 o'clock and 13 minutes. If you, if you have written down what time you think you got there, that will help. Not necessary. If you have other things going on, they're more important. But if you could, um, if you could write down the time, that would be helpful. Okay, now, once we do have these times, how does the scoring work? We have already calculated how long it, is go it should take you to get to each checkpoint and to the first checkpoint and to get from the first checkpoint to the second checkpoint and so on. Now, the question is how many checkpoints will we have each day? How many timing checkpoints? How many green signs? The answer to that is anywhere from one to lots and lots. We do have four or five checkpoint crews, so there will probably be at least four, maybe five, maybe more timing checkpoints each day. Another, let's go back to the red sign. Another time you will see the red sign is at lunch. Most days we will stop, at, have you stop at a red sign at lunch and we will collect time allowances. The person who will do that is K, and K is this person, green shirt, gray hat, and she will be asking for your time allowances at lunch each day. I am now done with the signs. You may take them away and put them in the car for further use today. This is, this is Rachel. I'm the red sign at the end. Those of you who did not wish her a happy birthday yesterday, We don't have time for all that. Any, too late. That was yesterday. Anyway, those who did not wish her a, a penalty, I mean, a, a, did not wish her a happy birthday yesterday, get a penalty today. Okay, continuing. How, how does this deal work? Okay, let's say that, and we're going to put the pressure here on the rookies, we're going to see how their scores would work. First thing you have to do is know when your start time today is. The start time of the event is 11.30. You know that from a number of things. The order of start, which you received yesterday, says stage start time for the, for the uh, Haggerty Trophy run is 11.30. It also says 11.30 in instruction one in the digital clock. And it also says that the start time today is 11.30 in the event schedule, event supplement two. Does that mean that 117 cars pull out of the parking lot side by side this morning at 11.30? Obviously not. But you do need to know what your start time is. 
We're going to put these folks in the front row here on the, on, the, uh, on the hot seat here since they chose to sit in front. Bill Franks in car 129, do you know what your start position is? I do. And what is your start position? 122. They, 112. They think that their start position is 112. If, you got, if the rest of you look at your order of start, on the second page near the bottom, you should see start position 112 and you should see car 129 there. You should all know what your own start position is from that list. So what is their start position, what is their start time? Well the event start time is 11.30. These pens are not as wide as I want. I hope you can, can read them. The event start time is 11.30. Their start time is 112 minutes later. That is one hour and 52 minutes later. So their start time is not until 1.22 this afternoon. If your start position is 3, it's 11.33. If your start position is 55, it's 12.25. You add your start position in minutes to the stage start time. So their official start time from the start is 122. Now let's say we have determined that the first leg, first green sign, which is now gone, it should take you, it should take you and them and everyone. Let's say we calculate that it should take 42 minutes and 10 seconds to get to checkpoint one. Therefore, we already know the car number 129, is that your number? That's right. The car 129 should be there at 2.04 and 10 seconds. We know that right now that they should be there then. Let's say that when they get there, it's 2.04 and 6 seconds. Okay, they're pretty close. They are 4 seconds early. They were due there. At 204.10, they got there at 204.6. They are four seconds early. And that is their score for leg one. They have a four second score, pretty good score. They got to checkpoint one at two, don't remember what I said, but let's say I, I said 204.06 having been four seconds early on leg one. Okay, we already know that the true time for leg two is, and again these are examples, these are not the correct numbers. Let's say it's a short leg, let's say the true time is three minutes and nine seconds. Therefore they should arrive there at 2.07 and 15 seconds. Let's say they arrive there at 2.07 and 20 seconds. This time they are late. They are five seconds late. Okay, checkpoint one, four seconds early. Checkpoint two, five seconds late. Sounds like maybe those cancel out and their score so far total for two legs is one second. What I just said is not correct. Early and late arrival do not cancel, do not compensate. They are cumulative. So their score after two legs would not be nine second, would not be one second, would be nine seconds. At the end of the day, let's say we had four check checkpoints, add up the four scores for their four checkpoints, multiply it by their age factor based on the age of their vehicle, which in your case is? A 63. A 63, so they have an age factor of .927 or something like that. We'd multiply that and that would be their score of the day. We'd rank that with the other scores of the day. If they had the best score of the day, they'd be the daily winner. Red badges may lead me to believe that they're rookies. If they had the best score of the rookie class, they'd be the rookie winner. No money for today's run, but there are trophies going to be presented at the party tonight. Other days, there are daily trophies and prize money for daily winners. Today is a trophy run. It is optional, but it is a tiebreaker down the road. So if there are two teams when we get to California that are tied, the tiebreaker will be the team that had the higher, higher finishing position on today's trophy run. So although it doesn't 
count directly toward the championship, starting tomorrow it does, although it doesn't count directly toward the championship, there is an incentive because it does count as a tiebreaker. Okay, let's say that, yes sir? Um, you're, you're assuming that the interval between cars is one minute? Cars should be at one minute intervals if everything was theoretically correct. So isn't today 30 seconds? No, no. Uh, the 30 second thing that I mentioned is only when you leave here tomorrow to get to the start. The 30 second interval that I was talked about earlier has nothing to do with today's trophy run. It has only to do with between here and the train station tomorrow. And then once, once you leave the train station, it's back to one minute intervals. So the only 30, sec only 30 seconds is when it is not, not during the competition section. Okay, now let's, have, let's, talk about, let's talk about what I just did because there's a subtlety here. Notice that the three minutes, nine seconds true, um, theoretical time for this team was based on not when they should have arrived at checkpoint one, but when they actually did arrive at checkpoint one. And that's important. And let me give you an extreme example of that. Let's say instead of a three minute leg, the second leg was an hour. Ten minutes into the leg, they had a flat tire. Now I'm sure they've done their flat tire drill. And let's say they can get their flat tire changed in eight minutes. And while they're changing the flat tire in the rain, the next eight cars go by them. And they say, oh my goodness, we're eight minutes late. This is terrible. Well, let's go, let's see if we can make it up. And if they can make it up before they get to the next checkpoint, then they're, then they're good to go. So they, they, go, they get going, they get going faster, they go faster than speed to try to make it up. Of course, as they are going faster than speed trying to make it up, they stay within the speed limit. They get to the first car that they need, that, that pass them and pass them. Okay, now we're only seven minutes late. They get to the next one, now we're only six minutes late. Maybe we're gonna make it. And then there's a checkpoint. They say, oh my goodness, we're six minutes late. That's terrible. Well, yeah, maybe it's terrible, but it's not as quite as bad as they think in that we have a maximum late penalty at any checkpoint if you're less than a half an hour late of only two minutes. So all they were, although they were six minutes late, they only have a two minute penalty so far. Here's where they can gr go wrong. If they say, okay, let's make up those other six minutes and they pass six more cars and now they're a minute behind the blue car and they started behind the blue car when they started the day, we're back in sync. What they have done, just done now is exactly wrong. Each leg starts from scratch when you get to the checkpoint, when you get to the green sign, which means that on the second leg they will be six minutes early, having been two minutes late at the second leg. Now we're not quite so forgiving on early arrival. If you're, if you're early at a checkpoint, you get a, up to a five minute penalty. So if they did what I said, tried to make up on the subsequent leg. They now have a two minute late for the flat tire, five minutes early because they didn't understand how things worked. Seven minute, they probably won't be at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the day. The point here is once you get to that checkpoint, you are now dead on time for the next leg. If you, if you at that point get, go back to speeds, follow the instructions, even though you're six minutes behind where you, should, where you think you should be, you can still get a perfect score. We call that an ace on the next leg and have good scores for the rest of the day. If you do get an ace, a perfect score on a leg, we give you some ace stickers. And you may have seen some cars that have lots of stickers on, the, on them. Any questions about the timing, how the competition works? Um, this is a fairly informal thing. If you have a question, raise your hand. I'll try to get to you. I may finish my thought before I recognize you. But raise your hand and we'll, if I've said something wrong, something you didn't understand, something that I missed. Okay, let's talk about the course instructions. You've already received your course instructions. Now this is very important. Most mornings you will receive your course instructions from Steve, who's waving in the back of the room, green shirt. Everyone turn around and say hi to Steve. Steve and Vicki will give you your course instructions most mornings for stages two through the end, two through nine. You get your course instructions from him a half an hour before your start time. Your course instructions for tomorrow you get at the finish line under the front canopy when you get to the finish today. So make sure we give those to you. And again, remember your order of start for tomorrow. We don't give you a separate one tonight when you get in because it's the same piece of paper you already have. 
How do you follow the course instructions? Well, to start with, each course instruction has five columns. The first column does not have a letter at the top. Look at page one of your course instructions. It has numbers, and they're in order. One, two, three, four, five. You must do everything that instruction one requires, then go on to instruction two. Everything that instruction two requires, then go on to instruction three. Column A has what we call cameo diagrams of intersection and sign configurations. Column B tells you the portion of the event that is beginning at that place. Column C gives timing and speed information. And column D is our hint column. It tells you, in conjunction with column A, it helps you do the instruction correctly. We're going to talk about columns A and D to start with. Column A shows a right turn. You're leaving the Holiday Inn. The Holiday Inn will be behind you. That is this building. You are making a right turn onto something called Watson Road. The words Watson Road are in parentheses because the road name may not be identified as you make the turn, but you either know it's Watson Road because you've been there for three days or at the next intersection it will be identified. Just to make sure you're turning out of the front side of the hotel to leave today, onto Watson Road, do not turn out of the side by the, whatever it is, Steak and Shake, onto Lindbergh or Kirkwood Road. And we're also telling you in column D that you may encounter support vehicles in Kirkwood today without them getting a penalty. Next, oh, the instruction has a bull, a dot at the bottom, that shows your position as you enter the intersection, an arrow to the right, that shows your position as you leave the intersection, a bold line from the dot to the arrow, that represents your route through the intersection, and a thin line to the left. The thin line represents, to paraphrase Robert Frost, the road or roads not taken. Checkpoint two shows you going straight at a traffic light, new symbol. The name of the road to the right at the traffic light is Geyer Road. And we're giving you a hint in column D that it's the second traffic light you'll come to. If we hadn't told you it was the second traffic light you'd come to, you'd have to get to the first traffic light, see is, that, is this Geyer? No, it's not. It's Sunset Office. Get to the second traffic light. Is this Geyer? Oh, yes, it is. This is the instruction. In this case, we're helping you by telling you it'll be the second traffic light you come to. Instruction three is different. Not an intersection. It's a sign. It's an overhead sign. It's, you can tell it's an overhead sign because the sign, the arrow represents your position. The sign is sort of on top of the arrow, overhead sign. I'm giving you a hint in column D that it comes quick, comes quick after instruction two. It has the word Chicago, Memphis. Will that be all the words on the sign? Not necessarily. In this case, I think it says Interstate 270 East, West, or some other stuff. But Chicago, Memphis will be among the wording on the sign. It will be a prominent portion of the wording. Next in in instruction number four is sort of a triple or a double intersection. A road will be going off to the left, thin road, road not taken, don't take it, go straight. A road will be going off to the right, again, thin road, don't take it. You will stay on the middle road, go toward south, I-270, toward Memphis. And again, that one comes quick. The next instruction is a sign on the right, arrow represents your position. Arrow is on the left, sign is on the right, the sign will be on the right. I'm giving you a hint because most free, you'll be on the freeway. Most freeway signs are green. That'll be a brown sign just to have, make sure you get the right sign. Yes? Yes. I know you were doing A and B. Yes, I'm going to talk about B and C later if that's the question. Yes. Column six, uh, six, sign on the right saying hospital. Instruction seven. Overhead sign saying Interstate 255 Chicago. And we need you to merge left, column D, to take that road. Don't take an exit to take Interstate something else. Merge left to stay on Interstate 255. I hyphen is our abbreviation for interstate. Mississippi River sign on instruction 9, Illinois State Line on instruction 10. Instruction 11 has information in brackets in column D. Bracketed information is interesting stuff that you can completely ignore. 
but given that we're doing a lot of Highway 66 stuff and a lot of, a lot of historic stuff, I will be giving you historic comments in brackets occasionally in column D. Instruction 14, overhead sign. Instruction 15, a brown sign. Instruction 18, again, a double intersection. You'll exit to the right, and then you'll exit to the right again to take exit 30 toward Indianapolis. Instruction 20, you'll take Highway 159 at exit 12. Instruction 21, you'll turn left at the traffic light at the end of the off-ramp. I'm giving you 45 minutes for lunch today. If you leave here a little early, and this may go against what you think I've told you already, but you can leave earlier than your official start time here without penalty. These folks can leave earlier than their official start time of 1.52 without penalty. I'll tell you in a moment when you have to be on time, but don't leave too early or you'll just be sitting out in the rain for a long time. But if you want to leave a few minutes early, I'm giving you 45 minutes for lunch, number of restaurants where you can choose to have lunch. If you leave here 15 minutes early, you'll have an hour for lunch. Instruction 22 shows you're going straight to cross Schwartz Street. There is a jack-in-the-box on, the on the near right corner. That's not the first jack-in-the-box you'll come to, because if you look up at Instruction 21, you'll see there's a different jack-in-the-box among the restaurants in Instruction 21. Instruction 24, there's a dashed road. What does that mean? The rules say that you will not take private roads, dead-end roads, unpaved roads, questionable roads, unless there's an instruction. They will also tell you that, you that such roads may be identified by a dashed line. Instruction 24, the road with the dashed will be one of those. It might be an alley, it might be a, might be a dead end road. Instruction 25 is a speed limit 40. Instruction 26 is the next speed limit 40. Instruction 27 is a curve warning sign, double sign, curve on top, 35 miles per hour underneath. Instruction 28 is not a speed limit 45 sign, it is a speed limit 45 ahead sign. Diamond shaped sign, yellow background, typically arrow saying speed limit becomes 45 up there someplace. Okay, well, here's a general question for people. Which direction do we go when we get to instruction 30. Someone said left. I have an instruction here that says instruction 30 says we go straight ahead. Why did people say left? Make sure you have the emergency instructions. Make sure you do the emergency instructions. The road is closed ahead at instruction 30. So make sure that you have the emergency instructions and do what they say between instruction 29 and 31, we are directing you on a detour. Instruction 32 is a stop ahead sign, not the stop sign itself, a yellow sign saying there's a stop sign ahead. Instruction 33, you will go right at a stop sign at sort of a slanty intersection. Instruction 34, you will go straight at a stop sign, comes quickly after the previous instruction. Instruction 37, right turn on Church Street. Interesting information, perhaps, in column D. Instruction 38 comes quick. Instruction 40, you're turning on to a divided highway. The road ahead will be unpaved or dead end or something at a stop sign. Again, between instruction 40 and 41, there is your emergency instructions will tell you to follow a, de a marked detour. Instruction 45, follow this curve warning sign in column D. What does that mean? Well, let's go back to instruction 2 where it says second traffic light. Nobody asked the question, wait a minute, you're telling me what to do at the second traffic light. Why didn't you tell me what to do at the first traffic light? And a further part of that question is, you're showing us what to do at some intersections. What do we do at the intersections that you don't show us? And the reason that you didn't ask, the reason I didn't address it, is that the answer should be fairly obvious, and the answer is keep on going. 
So obviously at instruction two, when you get to the first traffic light, you just go straight and eventually you get to the second traffic light. Now the, what I'm addressing is, is exactly what I said. What do you do when there's no instruction? The event regulations specify that and they say follow the obvious principal road. In most cases, the obvious principal road is the road directly ahead. But in the instruction in question, instruction 45, the situation will be something like this. Here is the sign, curve warning sign with 25 miles per hour ahead of it. The road configuration will be something like this. The center stripe will take you this way. There might be a stop sign on this road ahead saying that this is a lesser road. If your grandmother said, come visit me, get on this road and keep on going, you would go around that corner without giving it another thought. You would consider that the obvious principal road. If I hadn't given you an instruction and you didn't give it any thought, you would go that way. If you gave it too much thought, you might say, ooh, which way do I go? Anyway, I am hopefully laying that dilemma by telling you, follow this curve warning sign and follow the obvious principal road and go the way that the curve war warning sign directs you. Rookies at this point are a little bit uneasy saying, but I'm afraid that sometimes I'm going to get confused and I won't be able to figure that out. And my answer to that is, I think I have tried very hard that your, your concern will not, will not occur. Continuing, instruction 49, sort of a different instruction. It's sort of two components. There is a sign and an intersection. You turn right on the slanty crossroad, but only after you pass the sign, the crossroad sign. You come to a crossroad sign, diamond-shaped yellow sign with a plus on it, and then turn right. 55, I give you a hint that the Kansas Street sign is a street naming sign, like a city, little small city sign. And this is the first one of these. This is a sign on the left. All the signs so far have been overhead or on the right. This one's on the left. Arrow shows your position. Sign on the left of the arrow, sign on the left of the road. Question, yes. <coughs> Instruction 49, yes. Talk about that when we do talk about column C, but at the sign. I will address the question she asked in general in a moment, or Bill Croker will. Instruction 57, I'm giving you a double hint. One, when you turn on Possum Hill Road, it's the first paved road you come to. And second, the sign identifying Possum Hill Road will be on the left. By the time you get to 61, you're done with the competition for the day. At instruction 62, I'm sure you'll be ready for a break. And we need you to fill up from gas because the next refueling stop isn't for 190 miles. We think you all have 200 mile range, so if you refuel there, you should have enough gas to get to the, the next refueling stop. Instruction 63, go under a bridge, left onto a traffic light onto 255 South. Instruction 64, a sign on the right, 65, sign overhead, 66, double interchange thing, head toward Kansas City. Next page, lots of overhead signs. Instruction 76, left turn into the Holiday Inn, that's from Watson Road. Checkered flag done for the day, comes very quick after the previous instruction. Stop at the observation checkpoint, stop at the red sign under the canopy. We're going to be checking you in, we're going, to be talking, we're going to be talking to each team for hopefully a minute, otherwise you'll get backed up. I anticipate that some of you will be getting backed up. Just sit there in the rain until you can pull up and talk to us, or hopefully the rain will have stopped by then. More information are the two finish boxes, the two oval boxes with rounded corners on pages 11 and 12, or 3. These are what we call finish boxes. They give you information about this evening's activities, the first one tells you about the, reminds you of the social hour, and we're giving out trophies for today's run tonight. We also tell you about race car parking for tonight. 
The next box gives you information about the next day's run. We give you the cities, Kirkwood to Springfield. We'll tell, we'll tell you when and where and how to receive your course instructions. Again, it'll be at the finish line today. We give you the breakfast start times at each hotel for the next morning. Again, we tell you how to reach the start. And again, this is the only time you'll be at 30 second intervals. We remind you of the start time of the next day's run. And we also tell you how far it'll be to the first refueling stop of the next day's run. Normally, we don't go two days ahead as I've done here, but collect those quarters. Any questions on columns A or B? I, I'm sorry, A or D. Yes, sir. Instruction 64. Oh, the sign says Interstate 270, and then there's a big space, and then there's a 6. It means Interstate 270 is 6 miles ahead. And again, there may be other things on the sign. It may say Flooperville 3, Interstate 276, Memphis 109. Flooperville may be four, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're talking about columns B and C after we answer your question. <laughs> the next refueling stop is 190 miles from this point, including the rest of today's run, including the five miles to the start tomorrow morning, and then down the road tomorrow. The next refuel. Now, you will have other opportunities to refuel. If you have 250 mile range, we encourage you to refuel when we tell you to. If you refuel more often than that, that's fine. But if you refuel, if you have 200 mile range and refuel when we tell you to, you'll work out fine. We expect you to start today with a fairly full tank of fuel. But if you don't, although it's not listed, during the lunch break, where there are all those restaurants listed, there are also a number of gas stations there, so you can get refuel there, even though we don't tell you to. Okay, columns B and C. Instruction one, begin the tire warm-up. Two mile, two and a half mile tire warm-up, take five minutes, giving you the time zone, central daylight time, 11.30. Again, your start time is 11.30 plus your start position. You can leave earlier than that. We encourage you to. We're a little late on rally school, so the early cars may not have a lot of time after the end of rally school. But if your time is approaching and rally school is still going on, you might want to leave. But I think mostly rookies will be at the second part of rally school, and I think the first few cars in the order of start are, are not rookies, so that'll, so that'll give, you, give you extra time here. Anyway, you can leave here early without penalty. Tire warm-up is two and a half miles. Let you bring your tires up to normal operating temperature. How far does that go? That goes to the next thing in column, fa in column B, which is instruction five. So two and a half miles approximately from instruction one to instruction five, and we're giving you five minutes to travel those two and a half miles. Now you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Two and a half miles, that's interesting, but what do I care? Those, those darn guys over vehicle inspection made sure I didn't have an odometer, and that's correct. You can't measure that two and a half miles, but it's just to give you an idea of how far this portion is. If you're an hour or two into the event and you think you're still on the tire warm-up, you've probably done something wrong. <laughs> Instruction five, we begin the speedometer calibration run. It's 34 miles long. We're giving you 42 minutes to do it. We're allowing you to calibrate your, your speedometer at a speed of 50. As you pass the Ulysses S. Grant sign on the right, again, it's a brown sign, start your stopwatch, write down the time on your time of day watch, or both. When you get to the hospital sign, if, oh, and, and be going 50. Be going, at that point, what you think is 50. At the hospital sign, it should take you, you should be there in 2 minutes, 35 and a half seconds. When you get to the overhead Chicago sign, it should be 5 minutes, 3.8 seconds all the way back from the Ulysses Grant sign. There are two numbers shown. Right-hand number is from the beginning of the calibration. Left-hand number is the interval time from the previous instruction. We recommend that you, we recommend that you do only, that you pay attention to the cumulative times right-hand, not the, not, not the interval times, but they're there if you want them. Yes? If it's a 
That's approximate. Yes. Yes, what does the two minutes mean? Good question. I skipped that over and I should have done that. Instruction four has two minutes in parentheses. What does that mean? Does that mean you have an extra two minutes added to the five minutes? No. The parenthetical time is how far it should take you, how long it should take you to get to the end of this thing. When you get to instruction four, you are approximately two minutes from the Ulysses S. Grant sign. Parenthetical times, how far you are to the end of the transit that you're in. Anyway, check your calibration signs all the way up to instruction 17. At instruction 17, if your time is 41 minutes, 2.6 seconds, good for you. I can assure you it won't be. You will need to make an adjustment based on that. And I get off easy because I'm not going to tell you how to do that. But he is after the break. John, we got a question here. Yes. We don't have a speed limit. What speed limit is this to go? Yes, we do have the. Oh, on the, on the tire warm up, you can drive any safe speed. On the calibration run, we do give you a speed, and that speed is 50. Now, at instruction 17, again, we don't give you a speed. Instruction 17, we give you 11 mile transit. That's your lunch break. We give you 58 minutes. That's 58 minutes both. 45 minutes approximately for lunch and some time to drive the 11 miles. Again, drive at any safe speed. We often put you in transits to get you through congested areas, traffic lights, and so on. When you get to instruction 21, you are 10 minutes approximately from when the competition really begins at instruction 28. 26, thank you. Yes. When you get to the second jack-in-the-box at instruction 22, it's still three minutes down the road. When you get to the turn on to Vandalia, it's two minutes down the road. When you get to the first speed limit 40, the beginning of the competition, which is at the next speed limit 40, not the first one, is about 15 seconds beyond that. Finally, at instruction 26, the competition really begins. That's the point you need to leave on time. Now don't pull up to that sign, the speed limit 40 sign, the second speed limit 40 sign. Don't pull up to that sign until it's your minute because the car that's a minute ahead of you will want to pull up and leave there exactly on his minute after he goes and you know who he is because you've got your order to start, then it's time for you to pull up. Our folks here in position 112, hopefully at instruction 26, have already calculated what their restart time is, and all of you perhaps should have, and have written down that their restart time is 112 minutes, which is an hour and 52 minutes later than that. So their restart time at this point, and they should have already written it down, and if they haven't, they're about to, will be, if I've done the arithmetic correctly, at 3.07. When they leave there at 3.07, they are now for the first time on the clock there could now be a green sign, which is now gone, at any point be starting then. There is never a green sign until after the second digital clock of the day. And I'm also telling you that there's limited parking, so stay at, your rest, stay at the restaurants until it gets close to your departure time, or well, there'll be lots of cars parked along the side of the road and in the rain and limited parking, and it'll be sort of a mess. Yes? What if the person in front of you got lost? Well, you, you leave at your... You leave at your time. You're correct. Maybe, yeah, maybe the person ahead of you is, doesn't like rain and isn't running today. But yes, leave at your time. But if you see the car ahead of it, you, you know, don't, but wait till your minute to pull up because maybe he's going to pull up at the last second. Yes, sir. <coughs> we, try to, we try to do the end transits in safe locations. This one is a state highway, I believe, but it is a fairly untraveled state highway. It, it is, in fact, as it says in Instruction 22, it's Historic 66, and the interstate is a mile over and parallel, so most of the traffic is on the interstate. Okay, Instruction 27. Yes, sir? Pardon? Some cars do it differently. We don't recommend it. Some cars do not stop at the sign. Some star cars come up from behind, on at speed, uh, no, I don't want to think about it. Yeah, some cars do it differently. You don't talk about running starts, I hope. No. Good. 
Instruction 27. This is your first speed change. This is a delayed speed change. When you get to the sign, continue at 36 seconds. Continue at the previous speed. Oh my God, I don't know what the previous speed is. It's not on this page. No, it's not. Continue at 35 miles per hour. You have to turn to the previous page to figure out what it was. And your speed change is 36 seconds later. At instruction 28, you do your speed change to 40 as you quiet place. At instruction 48, 28, speed change to 40 at the sign. Instruction 29, speed change at the sign. Bill will tell you how to do the speed change maneuver. Instruction 29 is not a speed change. That's correct. Instruction 29 has been superseded by an emergency situation. Instruction 33 is a pause, your first pause of the day. Your first pause of the day would have been in instruction 30, but a pause is a time with zero miles an hour ahead of it. It means you stop for a length of time so as to delay 15 seconds. Does that mean you come to a full stop for 15 seconds and then go? Probably not. Bill Cro quiet please. Bill Croker will address the speed change maneuver after the break. Another pause at instruction 24. Speed change, at, uh, I'm sorry, 34. Speed change on 35. Pause on 36. Instruction 38 is a triple speed change. Speed change at the sign, 36 seconds, then you speed up from 35 to 40. Then you go for four minutes and 12 seconds on your stopwatch, your time of day watch, and then slow to 30. Instruction 39, we begin a transit. That's your morning break. Several places where you can find restrooms, maybe even gas if you need it. Three and a half miles approximately from instruction 39 to 45, the paired symbols. Hold on, hold on just a second. Let me get through this and then we'll take your questions. Three and a half miles approximately from the hourglass with the sand at the top to the hourglass with the sand at the bottom. We're giving you exactly 25 minutes to do that. At instruction 35, 39, quiet please. At instruction 39, we will start, you should start your stopwatch. At instruction 45, you leave there exactly 25 minutes after the time you got to instruction 39. If you do not know when you got to instruction 39, you will not know when to leave instruction 45 and will not get a good score. During those 25 minutes, we're giving you 15 minutes typically for a break. That's what the symbol in column B means. That's our euphemistically, euphemistically called rest stop symbol. There's a Dairy Queen, a Casey's, a Phillips, and a ZX gas at which you might take a break. Question, yes? John, at uh, 29, don't we have to take our time? Yes, same thing happens between 29 and 31 based on the emergency instructions. At instruction 29, write down your time, add six minutes, and that's when you leave instruction 31. You don't see that in the course instructions. That is all covered by the emergency instructions. Going back to 26 again. You should be going 30. When you leave instruction 26, you're going a speed of 35. You continue at 35 until you get to instruction 27. No, no, no. It could, it could be miles down the road. When you finally get to instruction 27, you keep going 35 for another 36 seconds. Start your watch at the sign. At the sign at, 30, at 27. The distance between these signs you won't know in advance. When you go left at instruction 43, you will be following the center stripe. At instruction 45, we've talked about that. Follow the curve warning sign. Instruction 49 is a double instruction. Crossroad sign, make a right turn. On an instruction like this, you do your speed change, not at the intersection, 
but at the crossroad sign. Instruction 53, stop sign, go straight, speed 15. Instruction 55 is the sign on the left. 57, speed change. It appears that every instruction through here, and I was hoping there was one without, didn't, has a speed change. Let's say that instruction 51, Warden 1100, didn't have a speed change. Let's say the column C was blank. Would that mean you can go any speed you want? Obviously not. If there is no speed given, it just means no speed change. No change, keep going the previous speed. So if instruction 51 did not have a 20 miles per hour in column C, you would continue at the previous speed, which is in this case 25. Finally, when you get to instruction 61, end time portion, that's the digital clock with the slash across it, end time portion for the day. You're not done for the day, you still have 54 miles to get to the finish. We're giving you an hour and 25 minutes to get there. Question. Back to the emergency instructions, you have exactly six minutes to get from instruction 29 to instruction 31. So make sure you write down your time at instruction 29 so you know when to leave instruction 31. And then, we just continue on with 31. and then you continue on with 31. You leave the speed limit 55 just like you did before at a speed of 45. Well, no, I mean you wait there just like you did at the other end transit. Wait for the car ahead of you to, to leave. When your time comes, time to go. Okay. Yes, sir. Talking about instruction 61, yes, I, that's where I was headed. Instruction 61, you're done with competition for the day. No more green checkpoint signs. Drive at a safe speed to the finish. We're giving you 15 minutes for fuel. We're also giving you time to drive down the freeway. It may take you more than an hour 25 on the freeway, afternoon rush hour in the rain. We don't know. We'll take that into account. Typically, you have an extra 30 minutes from the time we get here before we give you a penalty for being late at the final observation checkpoint, the red sign at the finish. Today, because of the rain and freeway traffic, we may extend that. But we need you to, we need you to take 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes to get gas, and then come on in as quickly as possible. Don't, re, don't re, stop for dinner and come in at 8.30 at night. You will have a DNF for the day. Right. If, if you're too late, you'll get a did not finish for the day. and you will have missed the reception and the trophies that and the trophy that you didn't win. <laughs> okay, those instructions from 61 to the finish will get you to the finish. Again at instruction 76, we end, you're done for the day, checkered flag. Make sure you stop at the observation checkpoint. If you pull into the parking lot at the at the Holiday Inn, go around back, park your car. And don't check in at the observation checkpoint. You will get a score of did not finish for, among other reasons, that we don't know that you finished. That's why you have to check in at the finish. OK, I'm going to take a couple of questions. Then we're going to take a quick break. And I was supposed to be done by my portion by 10. And we got a little late start, so we're pretty good. Hold on, don't. We got a couple questions. There are restrooms. Well, you found the restrooms. We'll reconvene at 10.20. Question. In the event after the instruction 61, where you end your time portion of the day, after the point you reach that time portion of the day, you have a breakdown and you are not able to get back within the an hour and 25 minutes. You're going to get nothing. Well, wait a minute. You said you give us a 30-minute buffer on top of that. Correct. So that's an hour and 55 minutes. Correct. If it's beyond the hour and 55 minutes, you get a DNF. Well, if you, it gets changed to a finished no score. If you, if you make it under your own power, it gets changed to a finished no score. But for all purposes, it's the same thing. No. Yes. And 30 minutes is flexible depending on... We may extend it on traffic. Most days we will not extend it. Okay, we'll see you back. I'll, Hold I'll on, Steve. I want to make okay. one Hold on. You are not running today.
If you are not running today, if you decide not to run for whatever reason, tell Steve and Vicki so we aren't looking for you. <laughs>